My lords and ladies, dear patrons, I am Lord Bloodraw, and you have come home to the Cathode Zone, where each week we will explore the shadowy depths of old-time TV. <laughs> Tonight we have another episode from a TV series based on a great old-time radio series, Lights Out. <laughs> In fact, Lights Out was one of three early genre TV shows based on an old-time radio show. Suspense and Inner Sanctum Mysteries, both great old-time radio shows, made the crossover to television in the 1950s, bringing chills to a whole new audience. <laughs> Tonight's tale comes to us from the dim, distant year of 1951. It's about a man who appeared, from a distance, to have everything, but actually had nothing. Nothing but his talent with a little piece of string. <laughs> Here, from Lights Out, comes the tale, Cat's Cradle. This is a right piece of string. You can tie a package with it, or you can knot it around your finger to remember things. But if you know what some people know, there's a great deal more that you can do with a piece of string. Like Man gets tired of woman, man strangles woman. You were supposed to be scared. Sorry, I'll give you a bigger reaction next time. You don't scare me half as much as that owl. I wish you'd find another house to haunt. He could use for the entire part of living in the country. Mm. Night music. A symphony of late. The orchestration is a bit macabre for my face. I thought you were mending that crack in the bedroom ceiling. I can't run the city without plaster. Well, Mr. Woodley said he'd deliver at five. It's now nine and no plaster. He's probably sitting around a cracker barrel spinning tall tails. Mm, plastered. Oh. <laughs> He'll probably stop by in the morning. That's not the point. I wanted to do the job tonight and said he'd deliver. There's no excuse for him. There's two ways to run a business. The right, right way, way and the wrong, wrong way. way. <laughs> yes, I know, darling. <laughs> And uh, now may I ask where you found this clothesline? I've been looking for it all day. In the laundry. Bring it up, please. I want to dry a few things. Yes, ma'am. Bob. Yeah. Would you think me silly if, if I told you something? Depends what it is. I saw something at this window last night. A face, a man's face. I think you're silly. You're letting that owl get on your nerves. Probably Mr. Woodley's about time. Yeah. Mr. Woodley! Mr. Woodley! Bob, what happened? Bob, what is it? It's all right, honey. Nobody's been hurt. <laughs> Mr. Woodley ran into the fence post and smashed the fender. Ladies, easy, easy, easy. Oh, I guess you There you go, right over there. That's it. That's it. You all right now? I thought I was a goner. Sure did. Well, what happened? Uh, what? Uh, what happened? I don't know. All of a sudden, 
I couldn't breathe. It felt, felt like the breath was being squeezed out of me. Must have been your asthma. No, no, this wasn't no asthma attack. Thank you. Felt like somebody had a, a thin piece of wire around the neck. That's, that's funny. That's, that fella I, I met on the road. What is it, Mr. Woodley? Yeah, well, I, I met a tramp on the road. He stepped right in front of a truck, he did. Like to scare me night at death. He wanted a lift, but I wouldn't hear of that. No, sir, he, Bob Taylor wouldn't. What's that got to do with your accident? Well, this fella had a piece of string in his hand. He kept a, kept a playing with it short after. You think he may have jumped up on the back of the truck? Oh, no, no, he, he didn't do that. No, I, I looked back as I drove away. And there he stood, uh, playing with it. With a piece of string. He didn't jump on, on on the truck. How did he get the wire around your neck? Remember what I said about the cracker barrel, Phil? Oh. You probably had an attack of asthma. No, don't you keep on saying that, Mr. Kane. I tell you, I was a being choked with a thin piece of wire. Oh, what? A piece of string. Mr. Wood, huh? did you bring the pipe? Uh, she's out there in the truck. I don't know her. Just soon as I get my breath. My back. I thought I took in my last breath. I sure did. The door, please. Yes. Yeah. See you. What are you doing out there? What do you want? Don't you remember me, Bob? No, I don't. I never saw you before. Phyllis? I don't know. That it's something familiar. It's George. George Logan. You, you remember now? George Logan. Oh, good Logan. Oh, it's good to hear somebody mention my name. Come on in. Come on in. I haven't seen you since you were the football sensation of that country. Well, you, you gave me quite a story. Oh, I'm boy. sorry. I, I wasn't sure you'd, you'd want to see me. How long have you been standing out there? Oh, a couple of minutes. I came into town yesterday, and I saw Phyllis come out of the village store. You got here yesterday. Well, where are you staying? Uh, out there. In, in the fields? Like some neat. Oh, no, thanks. Let's get one thing straight. I didn't come here for a handout. Bob didn't mean it. I didn't come for a handout. I came because I wanted to see you. I wanted to see somebody I know. Well, we're glad you did, George. Very oh, of glad. Of course, of course. You just surprised us. That's all. Sit down. Where have you been all these years? Oh, all over. Europe, Africa, Asia, wherever ships or wheels on my two feet would carry me. Well, that sounds exciting, but why all the travel? What did you accomplish? I was looking for something. And did you find it, George? I don't know. Yes. Oh, you seem worn out. I got a little heart strain here. You, you ever hear of Kin Chin Gunga? That's in the Himalayas. So high, your heart pounds like a drum every time you make a move. I tried to climb it with a party of Englishmen. Oh, that's too bad. What's that you're playing with? Playing, Bob. This is not to play with. This is the chord of the fancy cars. Fancy cars? Who are they? Stranglers, thugs of India. Killing was part of their religion. Killing with the cord. I got this loop from a man in Calcutta. There, look. It's like cat's cradle. Remember, Bob, we used to play it when we were kids. We, we used to pass it back and forth. I remember that, but this isn't kid stuff. This is complicated. Take that off the forefinger and there. Well, what's that good? Many stars, they call it. See, wherever the string crosses, there's a star. I learned that from the natives in Tonga Island. Can you do some more, Figgy? Oh, hundreds of them. Oh, that's clever, but you were always clever with your hands and feet. But not with my brains, huh? Ah, uh, don't be touchy, Goog. I didn't mean. Please don't call me Goog. But it's I don't just like it. I never liked it. Nickname. All the fellas used to call you. Yeah, that. and I don't like well, it. Show us some more figures, George. They're so intricate. I mean, 
Well, don't you ever get confused? Start out to make one and have it turn out to be another? Yeah, that's that's an easy mistake to make. There are two you can get mixed up on. The first one is what the Navajos call the big star. That's your symbol, George. You were a big star in football. Yeah, but it never meant much to me, big football star. What a about the other things, house parties, club dances, they wanted no part of me. I just never fitted in. There, there it is. George Logan, big star. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you laugh at your football career? Oh, I was just a guy plugging up the line. Nobody cared about me. Is that why you stopped playing? It seems to me you might have cared about yourself. That's easy enough for you to say. You were never on the outside looking in. You were popular, everybody liked you, and then later, you, Phyllis, together. But when I come around, it's just old gold lummox slob. But you were popular, you were famous. Yeah, but that's not the same thing. Oh, oh, what was that other figure, George? The one you said you could confuse with, with Big Star? Oh, two coyotes. That, that starts the same way, see? Pull that over. Come up. Middle finger cross, and I drop and bring it around. Then my forefinger. Now watch. There. Now watch this. Pull that out. There. There. The two coyotes. See them in the middle, and when you do that, they run away. Oh, that's hey. wonderful. You could work it up into an act. That's mighty. A you know, tell a story and illustrate it with these figures. You really think I could do something like that? Of course. You must believe in yourself more, George. Now, tell me more. Uh, show me about Big Star again, will you? I liked it best. Oh, not for anything. My life wouldn't be worth that. Why? Does it have something to do with the fancy girls? No. They're dead and gone. The man who gave me this cord said it was taken from the last of the Fonzie guys before he was hanged. There's a curse on it. No. How frightening. Well, uh, how does it work? Oh, you'd laugh at it. No, really I wouldn't. Well, you take this cord and you make a figure and you name the living thing you want the figure to represent. Then the curse of the Fanzigars works. The living thing dies. Excuse me, but it's getting late. How about bed? Goog, you'll stay the night. We've only a cock to offer, but it's better than sleeping in the field. I don't like you to call me Goog. I, I'm very sorry. I forgot. I'll you're, remind me, you're reminding me of the time when I had no power but my two hands and my feet. I got more than this now. Oh, George, he didn't mean any offense. You know how Bob is. Orderly and practical. You're... Good to me, Phyllis. I didn't come for a handout. Honest, it's important. Whatever your reason, we're glad you came. Now will you stay? Uh-huh. Well, now that's settled, let's get some rest. Unless that owl keeps you awake again tonight, Phyllis, and me too. That owl frightens you, Phyllis? Yes, there's one out there in the tree near the porch. You, you think this won't do what I told you? You think this is just fancy stories, don't well, you? Well, frankly, yes, but it doesn't really matter. Phil, let's get the water, huh? No, 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 wait. I gotta show you. I gotta prove that I'm not just old Goog anymore. I'm gonna make an owl. <laughs> I pull that loop over like that and come down. Pull that out. My forefinger drops off. Bring my whole hand around. Now watch. There. But Bob, it is now. See the body and the wings, too. You hear those frogs? I'm gonna I'm gonna name this figure for the biggest frog out there. Ah, that's great. The one. <laughs> Phyllis. That owl. Won't bother you anymore. You'll see. Bob? Bill, don't come out here. Oh, where are you? Oh! <laughs> Is it possible?
possible that old Goog, I mean, George, no offense, has the power of life and death in his nimble hands? He himself said that even during his football career, he never felt part of anything or accepted by anyone. A mystical way of bringing death to his enemies at a distance with no way of being implicated can be a very dangerous thing, especially in the hands of a man like George. Or anyone, really. Let's see just how dangerous as we go on to part two of Cat's Cradle from Lights Out. <laughs> Bob. He said he was going for a walk. Like to help fix breakfast? Oh, I sure would. I sure would. What what could I do? You can take that clothesline down for me, please. Uh, I'll bet that owl didn't bother you last night, huh, Phyllis? Why, uh, no, George, it didn't. I was awfully glad to, that I could do something to help you. You remember what I said last night about looking for something? Well... I think maybe you help me find it. How? Tell me, I I'd like to know. Well, it started way back when I was a kid. You were so strange and quiet. You never wanted to get in on things with the other kids. Oh, that isn't true. No kid wants to be out of things. And if he's out, it's because he isn't wanted. That's the way it's been all my life. Even when I was a big football star, I was... On the team, but I was never part of it. I think I understand. I always felt so lost. Why, why, why is that, Willis? Why? We all feel lost sometimes, George. But why did you stop playing football? Why did you go away? I wanted to change. I felt if I could be different, like, like, like Bob, I guess. Oh, I thought it. If I did change, if I could learn more things, if I could get to talk about a lot of things, then I'd fit in better. You wasted so many years, George. All you ever wanted was for someone to like you, to love you. Well, who loved me? I'm big and clumsy and... No. No. That's too much to ask for. But last night I felt I was. Was I... I, I don't know how to say it, Phyllis. Don't cry, George. I understand. See, that's what I mean. You understand. You understand. Phyllis, if I... If I only... <clears throat> Would you uh, put that up on the top shelf for me, please? What's wrong, George? Oh, I'm just a little dizzy. Nothing... To... The reaching did it. You better rest for a while. Oh, I'm all right. <laughs> oh. oh, don't be afraid, Phyllis. A very Phyllis. good trick, Gook. Don't be afraid, Phyllis. I said I was going to kill it. Oh, sure. The dreadful curse of the strangler's cord. What sort of an idiot do you take me for, anyway? Well, what do you mean? I know how he did it. I did it with the cord. You left this out there. This and the owl, too. Bob, he couldn't have. Why not? He got into town the day before yesterday, didn't he? Were you hanging around this place night before last? Yeah, but I, I, I didn't do anything, Bob. I, I was looking through the window, and you, and you both seemed so happy. I figured I didn't belong here. You wouldn't want to see. That explains the face you saw at the window last night. But I didn't plant those things, Bob. Honest, I didn't. But I could tell you about other times. You could tell me a lot of things, Google man, but I wouldn't believe you. Bob, I don't like you to call me good. And I don't like the method you used to get a free meal in a bed. You think that's the only reason I came here? I most certainly do. But you're welcome to stay just so long as you don't try kidding me again with all this nonsense. Bob, George is telling the truth. Oh, I wouldn't lie to you, Phyllis. Make him believe that. Oh, darling, be sensible. Don't humor him. He needs help, not sympathy. Wait, what about Mr. Woodley? Last night... He said he saw George in the road. You know what happened to his throat? Mr. Woodley is a cracker barrel storyteller, and so far as I know, he's still very much alive. No! That man on the road, he almost run me over with a truck. He called me a tramp. So I made a figure. But I didn't finish it. I didn't want to kill him. 
You're quick with your answers. I'm telling the truth. Look, George, don't pretend. You're down and out and you're broke, and I'm perfectly willing to help. Now, that's all I have to say. If you like, I'll, I'll give you a job in the shop. Why don't you take it, George? You can't go on like this, can you? You ought to be a part of something. Think it over. I don't know what you know about a machine shop, but while you're learning, why you can help out by sweeping the floor, running errands. Sweep the floor. You asked me to sweep your dirty floor? <sighs> you're going to take the last little thing away from me and rub it in the dirt? I'm sorry you feel that way, George. I was only trying to help. Help? Yes. Trying to help. You called me a liar. You said I was playing tricks on you. Well, I could do something to prove I'm not a nothing. I could take this string, and I could make a cat's cradle, and I could say this is Bob Kane, my good friend. George, stop it. Put that I'm string away. I'm afraid you'd feel quite foolish because I wouldn't be obliging enough to drop dead. The curse doesn't say he dropped dead. It says he died. Somehow. With a man's hands, oh, maybe. Stop talking like that, both of you. I don't like I it. I see you think you'd see the curse come true even if you had to do the killing yourself. Stop it, Bob. I could do it, too. I could crush him with my bare hands. Oh, George, don't. You're acting like a madman. I got to show him, Phyllis. Don't you see? He's taken everything away from me. I got to show you him. You get out of this house. Last night I was sorry for you, but you're causing nothing but trouble. Now, now I want you to get out. You don't mean that. You said you understood. I want you to get out. So, it's both of you. You hate me. You hated me in the old days. You shut me out like everybody else. You laughed at your old friend. Go, Logan, who was big and clumsy and that stupid. That isn't true. We never Phil, did. Phil, don't reason with him. Just get out of this house. This house. This house. This house. I'll tell you what you'll do. You'll sit in this house and you'll laugh at your old friend, Goog Logan, who played with a string. And you kick him out like a stray dog, but you'll never get a chance, you hear? Because I'm taking this string and I'm making a figure of the two coyotes. The two coyotes that laughed at an old friend, Goog Logan, and when you drove him out of the house. Oh, no, you don't. I'm going to watch you. I'm going to watch you die. There's the first slope. There's the second slope. And there's the... His heart must have given out. He's dead. Look at his hands, Bob. Get in the two coyotes. It's Big Star. He wove the wrong figure. He killed himself. George Logan. Big Star. Oh, excuse me. What did you say your name was? ambiguous ending, and quite sad, too, whether you think George had the power or not. If he didn't have the power, then his heart simply gave out under the stress. If he did, then one mistaken pull of the string ended his life. <laughs> oh, and speaking of pulled strings, I'm sure you noticed that whenever they'd go in for a close-up of the cat's cradle, they'd fade cut to another pair of hands actually doing the manipulations. I guess the actor just couldn't master it. You know, I try it myself, but uh, with the low rafters in this room, I'm, I'm afraid I'd hang myself. <laughs> well, anyway, my loads and ladies, 
I want to thank you all for watching, and I hope you'll join me again next week, dear patrons, as we tour the dark depths of what TV used to be. <laughs> as always, I am Lord Bloodraw saying, you're always at home in the cathode zone.